I'm here with the project we're on, which is actually a connected communities project, right. which is media, community, and the creative citizen. Uh, and we're in the, I don't know, last, let's say, seven or eight months of a two and a half year project. Um, six universities, uh, you can have the list, but maybe we'll hold that to later. Um, uh, and we've got three strands. Uh, we're interested in the notion of uh, what is a creative citizen? Uh, what impact do they have on the creative economy? Why do some people seem to, I don't know, do stuff for seemingly no economic gain, for kind of uh, maybe community or civic orientated goals? And so we're interested in that idea across three areas. Um, firstly, um, community journalism, which is the thing I, I'm, my research interest is in, specifically around an emerging form, let's say, of community journalism called hyperlocal journalism. And we've got some interesting partners there. Uh, uh, talk about local, a kind of advocacy group for that sector, uh, and Ofcom, who uh, I've been particularly interested in our, some of our findings right from the off. Uh, very good partner. Um, so uh, who are these people who do hyperlocal? There seems to be a lot of it across the UK, 600 plus websites of sometimes trained journalists, but more often not, but doing journalism, and in that way, often challenging some of the norms you associate with journalism practice and the industrial model of journalism in that way. Um, secondly, around um, uh, community-led design. Uh, this is more often where you know there are uh, planning in the urban realm and how community groups coordinate and organise themselves to often challenge or cooperate with planners, uh, how they use uh, di the digital, um, to what effect, um, and how, uh, in a way, their voice is getting uh, taken note of more and the kind of emerging participatory practices out of that. And then thirdly, around creative communities and in a way trying to learn something about how they organise themselves. And so we're kind of in that strand, we're interested in uh, co-working spaces where creatives come together in uh, formalised and informal spaces to I don't know, work somewhere that isn't their bedroom, let's say. Uh, uh, but also um, we're interested and we've got a research site in Bristol in the ways in which uh, creative communities form. So uh, we're working with a, a very informal organisation in Bristol called South Blessed, which effectively is a kind of uh, a very entrepreneurial person is here somewhere today actually, um, uh, effectively kind of developing a scene around themselves and around the community around them and that being gradually kind of amplified and becoming significant. So how does that happen? What are the processes? Uh, what we're interested across all those strands, what kind of assets does a creative citizen need or what do they have at hand or in their networks to help them do what they do? So uh, we've got a, a big end of uh, project conference in September, the Royal College of Arts, and we've got probably findings then and to follow for the next year or so in the way that these things do. Fantastic. And you're, you're not demonstrating anything today, but you've got particular aspects of your work that you're yeah, showing and uh, talking to people. So, uh, some of what we've done uh, has been, as you imagine, pretty traditional stuff, interviews. Uh, we've done quite a uh, large-scale survey and um, in collaboration with another HRC project, actually, but also interviews with people who run Hyperlocals, for example. But we've also done some kind of um, co-creation interventions uh, and one of them, for example, was a, a hyperlocal in Cannock, which is just a small town north of Birmingham, from which the mainstream press has retreated effectively. It has no newspaper at all now. Uh, it gets to sort of think about uh, a small insert in a Wolverhampton-produced paper. Um, but there is a hyperlocal, um, uh, a guy who uh, effectively just does this in his spare time, um, and he does it on the web. He... Uh, uses the web as his resource. He he doesn't do what journalists do, which is spend all day on the phone, arguing, stu you know, very different model. And yet, you know, there's a kind of disconnect between him and the community. It's not automatic that the technology, the digital, helps him become embedded within that community. So we thought about that as a problem. And he actually said he thought actually that creating a newspaper where something that familiar, that's familiar to the community they would understand would be a good idea. So we co-created a one-off edition of Kenek Kanak and went down, we co-designed it. Um, we did some kind of innovative news gathering methods or experimented with that. 
um, and produced a newspaper and then drove around Cannock delivering it to chip shops in Cannock to the delight of Cannock chip shop owners everywhere. Um, and it was interesting and he's going to follow up and do his second edition. He's identified potential advertising as a revenue source and so he's changing his own practice. But tells us something about not assuming that the digital is by default um, participatory and transformative. It takes some of the things, there are other social, cultural kind of factors and economic factors that make that happen. So it's been quite interesting to do that kind of close work actually. Yeah, because I was going to say that a lot of the, the assumption with sort of the citizen journalism is that it is things like Twitter and the internet that's yeah, actually enabled yeah. a lot yeah, of I, that to, to take off. Um, the, the, the kind of discourse around citizen journalism often places them in a very heroic mode. You know that they're always there at the scene when the journalist uh, isn't and they'll uh, produce some amazing content. And, and the reality isn't quite like that. And in a way, they are, the reality is a bit more banal and everyday. But that makes it even more interesting because that means the practice is open to a much wider group of people who are doing it for themselves, for often very small audiences, and some of them are building very small enterprises out of them, some of which think I want to be bigger enterprises. And that's, un, you know, that's undiscussed in the discussion around the creative economy. You know, it's almost like here's an interesting new bit and we need to work out how to count this and take account of it. And presumably filling in the niches where com commercially it's not necessarily viable to have that kind of thing anymore, but both these things being, the gaps being plugged. Yeah, in many scenarios, so it's a kind of gap filling. But also in, in cities, there's a kind of vibrancy. So where I am in Birmingham, uh, there's a whole raft of hyperlocals, and, uh, and uh, I do it myself, and it's kind of my research interest came from my own practice here. But we're about to have a local TV station. Uh, we have a local newspaper who's actually on a bit of resurgence at the moment. So it becomes a very vibrant media space in which there are the amateur, the professional, um, uh, the entrepreneur, uh, and for me, you know, the, the cities seem particularly, you know, exciting site of uh, research. And we're doing a little bit of research in East Birmingham on an edge of town estate, which, even though it's part of a big city, feels very isolated, very sensitive about its representation, and effectively has its own media, its own radio station, website, newspaper. And you would think it was a different world away from the city completely. But it's very immensely proud of its output and uh, is combative in its relationship with the city as a whole. Uh, so yeah, you can find interesting sites of research within cities, on the edge of cities, in the rural. So uh, it's quite exciting space to research in, in that respect. It's quite a wide wide research base. So where can people go to find out more information and if they're interested in coming to your conference at the end of the project yeah. and that kind of thing, where can they find out that kind of information? Uh, so uh, we're uh, on all the usual platforms, uh, but uh, the place to go and find out that is creativecitizens.co.uk and uh, it'll be forward slash events is where the stuff on the conferences. I think the ticketing for the conference opens uh, uh, I'm pretty sure somebody said to me March, but it's already March, late March, should we call it? Uh, but the call for papers has passed and it was a really good response to our call for papers. Around 50 papers we had, uh, which we, I think we've got, got it down to about 20, but very international. It's a kind of theme, I think, which has been emergent in several disciplines. And this is, it feels like a nice coming together of some of that emerging work. So it should be pretty good. Creativecitizens.co.uk is the place to go to. Thank you very much indeed. That's great.